And welcome. I'm, I'm amazed that the room is full, and it makes me also happy to see people are interested in animals. Um, so let's get the unnecessary stuff done first. Who is the person in front of you? It's me, Marion Stalke. It has nothing to do with Stalker. Stalky or whatever. So it's an old, uh, very old German word for people that are working with steel, steel production, something. Um, I am in games since 2010 for various companies. I worked something on something between 10 and 20 games. Um, I started in a small company. So because of that, I was actually thinking, yeah, okay, I'm the animator, so I'm also rigging it because who else should do it? And that's how I became also rigger. And it also, um, when I started, I was pretty much an all-rounder. I also did uh, 2D art. Um, and at my second company, I specialized more in animation and rigging. And I can, from now, from today on, say that every rig I animated, I also did myself. Um, what also makes me improve the rigs a lot because I, as an animator, I can directly shout at myself and change it. Um, so that made, like in total, I think about over 100 rigs that I did by now with variations, with everything included from weird sci fi um, monsters to humans, auto monsters, um, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and for various companies, I often was the only animator. So I set up the whole pipeline, what also makes me a tech artist in what some way. Um, that's what I do, apparently. Um, for, for the talk right now, like you obviously noticed, I'm not taking myself that serious. And also, we're talking about animals, so I want us to have some fun. And I don't like, like strict classroom one talks in front, so it will be tiny bit it or interactive. But don't not worry, you will not direct in front. No, no, no. But I sometimes want to answer a question or like raise a hand. And we will just quickly practice that. So who of you does have a pet at home or likes animals? Like, did I say that? Likes animals. I'm sorry. I do my best with uh, yeah, no, German, I do my best. I do my best. Um, and so I have two pet animals. Um, they're bunnies. And people are like, oh, bunnies are not so e expressive. So I have a little um, treat for you for like killing that rumor forever. The, sadly, the video is not that good. But that's Fiverr, my bunny, and he loves the sofa. So look how he tells me that. <laughs> so that rumor is forever done, okay? Um, so we're continuing. And right now I'm at Ubisoft. Um, they're making games, maybe you have heard of them. And that also leads me to the next slide. Um, normally there are no dumb questions, but because I can't answer any questions about Ubisoft, in case you ask a question about Ubisoft, I will just do a dance and ask for, and ask for the next question. Um, yeah, it's like that. So everything you see is based on my own research. Um, I did all the rigs, um, excluding the one I took from Blender Studio to show human anatomy um, myself, or based on Rigify, and did all the models myself. They're not associated, you can read it. Um, the only thing I can say, I would say, I would love to say hi to Ubisoft Minds, where I'm working at, to the wonderful team that I have there and the wonderful studio, love you. So, and now we are going to, do gamers, gamers actually care? So why I'm doing this talk? And we're like, oh, you know, working for so many companies, it's, it's anywhere else, nobody cares anyway. Yeah, they do, they do. So there is this um, mid blog, Leiden medievalist blog, where they complain how wrong uh, like games that are historically correct in other ways portray the pigs, for example. So like 
our modern pigs are made for producing as much meat, sadly, as we need. Kind of um, other discussion about that. But back then, they actually looked more like wild boars. They still had this wild Euro case going on on the back. They had freckles, they had even these big teeth and stuff like that. So gamers do care. And then the, the main quest is a whole site dedicated to how bad horses are made. <laughs> <laughs> and I worked on a horse game that I certainly cannot recommend. But um, the only thing they liked about the game was the horse, and it was from me. So hi. Um, <laughs> that, that one made me happy. So thank you. And also on various social media, there is, can you pet the dog? And now can you pet the cat? And, can the, and you know, they actually care. So why not making everybody happy, including me, and making your animals a lot better? So that's it. What is the content? So you have a rough overview. I will, exp because this is the first day of the conference, I also will explain actually basics, like a bit. So you're like not like me on the worst day of studying to know a full class of 20 people in the first study hour were like, what actually is, is rendering the professor talking about until someone got the guts to ask. So some little basics, then animal basic and an anatomy, that's my end boss in English words, anatomy, yeah. rigging legs, a horse neck, um, because that's a problem. <laughs> Birds and how do we fold wings probably, especially in low poly. And what about the mesh flow? There are some extra slides in between that make a bit more fun, but we'll see about that. So, what is rigging? And why am I grinning like an idiot on it here? <laughs> so, because rigging is constraints and stuff pulling on bones and doing a thing. And that comes back then from sailing. So, what I'm doing here, this is a rigger actually rigging on a sailboat. <laughs> So, that, so, I had to make that photo. Um, but it goes further than that. When there was a Colosseum, it, uh, you know, the one in Rome, where they had the, the gladiators and stuff. Um, imagine Italia, 12 o'clock, sunshine. Hot. In a stone building. Hot. So they had actually, um, like, sails blocking the light. And the people that put that up, we're sailors. So that is actually in um, when you go to every stage, the things, the lights and blindfolds, like these things here and people that put it up, the rowdies at the conference, kind of, that's also called rigging because it also pulls strings and strops. And to actually show how this is like in Blender, that's the rain rig from Blender Studio. That is what we mean rigging the connection between a model and the, the bones, so an animator can animate. Um, also, the next one is there's different terms, for example, in 3ds Max, um, it, it's a skin modifier that does it, um, weighting and weight painting, even connects the single vertices to a specific amount of bones. And last but not least, locomotion. Is anything, an animal locomotion, of course as well, that moves something from A to B. That's all it is to it. Um, after every chapter, when my brains allowed it, allows it, I will ask you if you have any questions to it, uh, but I think this should be really clear. So, comparable anatomy. That's my first dumb question I will ask you. What are human legs made for? It's simple. You don't, there's not really a wrong answer. Someone. What are any, what legs made for? Yes. Locomotion. Locomotion. Ooh. <laughs> Running as well. Good. Kicking. Kicking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So these three specimens, they all have legs. And you're right. For the human body, 
Um, they're all that what you just said, but they're also made for keeping your weight. Yeah? They're keeping your weight centered. They're keeping you upright. We are not good at jumping. Keep that in mind. Like, yeah, some people are, but not as good as a bunny or other animals. And that's a, that has a reason. So keep in mind, remember, it's for keeping our weight somewhere. Otherwise, we would sit on our butt, of course. So and if we look at those two specimens, um, you see that like, if you see comparable anatomy, then it's always like, yeah, the front legs are actually like our hands or our arms, and the back legs are our legs. The thing is, anatomically, yes, but not what they are for. So we just said the legs are for standing. What are our arms made for? Balance. Balance, Balance kind of? Manipulating, Manipulating things? Ah, oh. <laughs> he said hugging. <laughs> Lifting, yeah, but even simpler, we were apes. Grabbing. grabbing, good. We were apes, so we were actually made for grabbing, swinging, going through jungle. And both animals on the right side are not made for that. I would have the fun to animate a horse going to the jungle, like, ooh, uh, but anyway. <laughs> um, so what are the legs of the front legs of these animals made for? To keeping their weight, like our legs. So that's why they are almost straightish, like going straight down, like our back legs. So you don't want to bend them in a weird way. So anatomy, understanding anatomy is directly connected to animating and rigging it. Because it has to keep a horse head, like all the weight on the horse head. Because they are quite huge. They, you know, what the long face. So that, that is the thing. What are the back legs of a dog or a horse made for? Acceleration. Acceleration. So you, so you basically have front of us is standing upright and the rear part of the animal is actually like push, pushing, like standing on almost a tiptoe and a pushing. Um, so that's why some movements that people imagine are possible are not possible for animals. Um, I just had a discussion with someone that was like, yeah, just make the horse run and then go, Hoo! you know, that, how is that called in English? When we are up, we are up. So what would, what would happen when we as a human would do that? Like we might, we might jump, but most of the time we would do a barrel roll because what they want is like, Da, 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 and then hitting the brakes. And then what you hit, when you hit the brakes, you're like, Wee! so to rear up, you're like, da, 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 da. some kind of standing pose, and then rear up. Because you, there, there is not a good system to run and rear up. That's not how they work. It's like a car also can't rear up. Unless there's, you know, so. That's kind of a thing to, to remember. <laughs> um, one more little thing. There is on the skeleton from myself, <coughs> there is a red part. Do you know what that red part is? Exactly, the clavicle. Um, a lot of animals don't have it uh, because we are apes. We used it for all our body is like grabbing the next, the next tree branch and they don't need it. There are some animals that still have it. For example, turtles. Um, 
I did see something on squirrels that looked like it, but I couldn't find reverence if they have it or not. But um, what I say, if you go with hoofed animals and predator animals, that's pretty much the case. So we are slightly coming back to all the problems we have with legs. Um, so how does this work? We are now at our front. Front legs, front paws, front hooves. You can see, if I would like go on all four, this would be my front leg. For a human, it's actually like, for a bear, it's, it's actually the same. We're having our full hand that we would use on the floor to keep our weight. Um, for a horse, everybody, they actually, that is not entirely correct. They're actually standing on their nails. I don't even want to imagine standing on my nails all day, but yeah, you get that. And for the dog, they're actually standing on the front of their fingertip because the, the nail is up there. Same for cats, but that's even harder because they can, can move that thing. So I think in rigging, most of people do the first two correct and then it gets terrible. So what to do with the dog paw? And um, the character I will shoot the dog under to me is a gray fox. A lot of people, what is that animal? It's a fox breed native, to, not breed, a fox species native to America. Um, one, two of them exist. One is highly endangered. Go to um, WWF page and donate something, please. And the other ones are dogs, yeah? So, and you see what dogs can do with their heads. It's actually keeping them completely straight. If you, like, they're actually doing this when they're relaxing. They're not doing this. Not at all. They are doing this. So, and now we are, we are jumping into Blender. Um, and just to show that again on the rain rig, if it lets me select anything, but yeah, we see it here anyways. So you see, like, it's a normal IK setup. If you move the leg, the, uh, if you move the foot, the leg comes along and the foot behaves like we are used to, like we suspected, right? That is exactly. That rig you can get on Blender Studio, actually. Um, so yeah, I think that's fine. Um, for the next, the horse. Um, this PC is a little bit slow, but I hope we can make it. Um, that is one. But no, that's fine. Um, so when we're moving the leg, it works quite fine. I think that's also okay. Um, what I'm not, this rig is based on Rigify. Um, like that much, it, it allows this, like people, I've seen it in many games that this is bending naturally too much forward. Whenever you will animate something like this, please remember, they are standing on their nails. How much can you bend your nail forward? <laughs> so please don't do that. Um, and then we have the dog rig. And I show you the problem first and then the solution. So I think we can go a bit closer here. This is also the rig fabric, so not for me. And when you, it's modeled like that. So the paw has some weird 90 degree angle here, which I don't like, um, but it's like how most models are modeled. And then they want to make the leg straight, like you saw in the photos. And what you have is this bulge. And then you could counter animate it and put a bone in it or shape key and stuff like that. Um, but I would like to propose a new way to actually fix it. 
Um, so we see that I moved that modeled that character like here, and I would advise you to model it like this. So the legs are actually straight, because what we remember what I just said, those are actually more like hands. So now they are stretched out like the human hand. And you can do like a lot, a ton more. And your modeler can even model it like I did before wrongly and just move it a bit. It shouldn't be that hard for a good modeler. Um, that's it. This is the model I did for that. So um, there is, now you see that even though I can do all kinds of stuff. This is perfectly straight. There is no weird bulge. There is no weird anything. You're just fine now. Like this works. Um, this posing is a lot, lot, lot more natural. You have no problems. You can move the toes, move everything and I will not come hunting your dreams. Um, yeah, there is, I've not seen that technique before, so this is the first time spreading it, and I hope you do it now. <laughs> Good, um, that is one of the first things, and now we are going to that one, the neck. How many times I have seen Horses with broken necks in games and can't count anymore. Um, and it's actually, but it's actually not that easy. Um, first of all, use references. For use references. Because it's not like they're like, horses are standing there and they're like, nom, 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 nom. That's not how to do it. They not just bend their neck. They're bending their body, like they're like, actually engaging their shoulders, they're coming back, they moving their legs apart. Um, funny enough, like, I find it funny, um, when, I, whew, when I checked in in my hotel, <laughs> that is on the wall. <laughs> I was like, it's hunting me. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> look how much that Horse is bent forward. And that's what I'm saying. So for this horsey, it's I um, didn't animate the step. Yeah, it's just pose to pose. But how like it has to go down. This is not even all the way down. Um, but this already works. Yeah, if you have that in your game, this this will work totally fine. And uh, for animating that, you like have to move. Come on, Blender, come on. Yeah, you have to move the, the neck forward. So I did move that bone. Oh, he's, he's like, oh, that file is too big. Okay. Um, you have, and you see the shoulders, especially this one here, can even move more up and it could even sink down more and when you have the shoulder can engage more yeah it can easily sink down even more we all have in school we have seen a giraffe and a giraffe drinking it's not just the head it's it's more than that can you get just louder um so that is I think very important. Use reference and rig it a way that it works. We can actually enable the deform bones. Oh, come on. The deform bones. So you actually see how much the neck bone will differ from its original position. And I, this here is a corrective bone that I can recommend to you. That is for the neck, keeping the neck upright, because that's 
what you want to have because that's still here. Um, I need a bit check on how much time we have. Okay, that's fine. Good. So here's it again for like how we set up. Um, and you see how it moved. That's it. Very simple. So first extra page. Woo. How Gander and Animal Kids are portrayed in games. So that's the default. The default is most of the time male. That's a female, just a bit smaller, and that's a child. <laughs> and sometimes they are fantasy, so he has a bigger horn and she has a smaller horn. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. Come on, you can do better than that. You can do a lot better than that. So for male and female, and it even counts for bunnies, <laughs> is they have much broader shoulder much broader um, stirn, 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 forehead, thank you. Much bigger forehead and actually less belly for most of the times. I didn't include it because I don't know how people would react to it, but normally you also see um, bulges down there, because especially on horses. Um, that, that's just, yeah, anatomy, that's, that's just it. And for the female, you have less shoulder, you have actually um, thinner faces and less of a neck, but especially uh, on horses and cows, much bigger belly, much, much bigger belly. Um, this also depends highly on the species. So please use reference. But f for example, for dogs, you know that if you look at a dog, you, you not can easily tell it from the start if it's a female or male, but for a lot of other animals, you can. And yeah, and for the kids, they're totally bonkers. <laughs> yeah, they take more legs than everything else. Just think about humans as well. We don't have long legs at the beginning. Other animals have. They're much cuter when they're babies. Like everyone is much cuter when they're babies. So yeah, maybe let's do it better together. So what's up next? Birds of a feather. So um, we're jumping into Blender right now again. And also um, I'm talking about low poly, but of course you can add 100 um, more bones and fix it with more bones. But I'm talking low poly or your mobile game or whatever the bird is in the back. You don't want to stress your CPU and everything else anymore. So how is that even possible? We're here. So, and we're here changing there. So that, okay, so this is the ready working animation for you. Whoop, and it's done. Look at this. We're having to, to actually show it. I um, need to turn it on, of course. These wings consist of six bones. Six bones, like, perfectly folded, and you're done. Yeah. How is it possible? So first of all, I kept the right wing unclean for you. What does it mean? So left wing looks perfectly fine, right wing not so much. Why is this? Because of skinning, of weight painting. Weight painting is an extra thing that people are often who dislike a lot because they come from other programs. <coughs> like I know from, from other programs that we change anything on your mesh, it will kill the skinning, the weighting, and you have to do it over again. You don't, Blender is fine. You don't be afraid. Make the skinning, make it really good. You're changing something on the topology, it's still fine. It doesn't crash it. So when, when we look at this, 
And I'm like, doop, doop. If you select both and go to, to weight painting, you can select the bones. And that's how this is cleanly skin weighted. I think we're not talking about enough about skin weighting. It's a bit of an own art. Um, this wing is also weighted to the body. That makes it possible to go inside the body or connect it to the body and just be gone. And if you see that the differences might not, not <coughs> look that big, but they are like how it is at the end, like all over the place and you sort it and that's the same. So, whoop, white painting nicely, not white painted nicely. That's a difference that you can easily make. The next trick for it is um, as a rigger, especially in a junior rigger, you're like, oh, everything needs to be connected. No. No, it doesn't have to be connected. It doesn't have to be connected. That's, especially this one, it looks like it's connected, but it's not. So if you're on your bone preferences and say connect, you can unconnect it here or the hundred of different ways to do it in edit mode, disconnect it, and then you can fold it in here. And even better, like this one, Look where it ends up. It's actually inside the body. I took a magpie because when you have any references from a magpie, the tip are white. And when they fold their wings, the white tips are completely gone. They're completely covered by these here. And tip, and it's gone. Yeah. That's just how you do it. Um, Yeah, my PC is like, <gasps> everyone is watching, I can't. Come on, it's not jumping to data. No, it does. So, and here we are. Like, and this magpie totally agrees. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, good. So, what we learned bones doesn't have to be connected, skin weighting is important, and also think about how you make the skin weight. And one more thing, that is, that is like people came to me, how, why do you know that? Because I went through pain. Game engines, like all of them, don't accept more than four vertices, more than three or four vertices, depending on the engine, to one bone connected. So don't spare you the trouble, yeah? Spare you the trouble and get a weight, limit total, and set four or three or whatever. And, and I, I, I can't even imagine, like, people say, I always have it to 10, and like, for what reason? So, yeah, keep yourself um, a bit of work here. Um, good. So there's also connected you on anatomy of a bird wing. And the reference, as you can look at, I see a lot of the first one that doesn't really work very well. And that's why, even if it looks like the wing is straight, especially if you look in the references from Birds of Prey, this, this thing here looks very straight, but underneath there's actually like muscle like tissue that pulls it back. So that's why the model can be straight, but your rig shouldn't be. And this is like the setup I just used, as simple as it is. Um, I want to make clickbait for a bit. So the biggest liars in games. It's actually feathers. Why? So depending on the game, depending on how important the bird character is, you, normally see only the, way, the feathers from one side. So the wings would be like overlapping in this direction, even if it's from that direction. So what I mean is that the wings have to 
overlap like this or like this, depending on where they are. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So, and um, there's so much more to tell you. Um, but one more thing about bird locomotion, about flying, that's why I brought this here, so I can show it a bit better, is that when you have, like, you can imagine your, your hand being the, the tip of, your, of it. When, wings, when birds fly, it's just not like dup, dup. It's actually they turn it inwards a bit and then bring it back up. That's very important animation. Also, when they fold the wings, they're like, you have to get this all behind your back. So it's not like dut, it's like actually to turn it in a bit and you want to have it at your back. So you have it like this and you want to point at your butt, then you're doing it correctly. You will never forget this. <laughs> so, good. We looked at that already. Um, I want to have a small rigging trick because juniors always ask me, how do I color my rig? So I put some brain power into it and came up with this. Blue for the left, green for the right, yellow for the spine, red for the head is fine. Stay away from white, black, and gray. So the gizmos we are talking about is all the controllers. You're moving. And why did I come up with this? So if you turn this into more gray mode, then you see that yellow is like very present for us. And red is an alarm color. <clears throat> so when, for example, you have one of the green and blue on one side and red on the other side, it will always be more pronounced for the animator. Or if you have even yellow on one side, it will also be pronounced more. And that is actually distracting. So keep it in the middle. And like you see, blue, blue for the left, so you never forget which one is which, and green for the right, yeah, and white, black, and gray, the, I think it's obvious. The selection can be white in programs, the viewport is gray, it's just not a good color. Yeah, I hope that is useful. Um, and we are on time. Good, so how important is mesh flow? How much do you like your rigor? <laughs> like I had people coming up to me, you know, we are, we are high poly now. Do we need mesh flow? Like, yeah. Why? Because I don't want to put in thousands of corrective shapes or whatever. So if you have a good mesh flow, and I think this one is actually pretty good, maybe has some flaws. I don't think I'm like the top of the game. I always still learn, but I think this one works pretty well. It keeps the forms and it's low poly. The things are pronounced. If you model a character, talk to your rigger and do your state you. <laughs> because it makes it for everyone easier. Like the animator has to animate less blend shapes and uh, you don't have to hide things. It's just making it a lot more easier. I clicked. So. Is good mesh flow important? Yes, please, unless, to, unless you hate the rigger. Please don't. Um, so have a last, last fun extra for you. So what about fantasy animals? So we have a horse. And if it's a unicorn, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Unicorns, yeah. It's like, a, yeah, that works. But having wings on it. The birds have an extra bone attach, attach, no, bone form, where all the muscles go to move the wings because it's such an effort. And so they need to be attached, the whole wing, they ha would have to have like this amount of chest to move that up. So I'm sorry, just say it moves with magic, okay? It's magic. Um, and then we have this one. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, I kind of agree with the dragons in um, Game of Thrones. I think like they might work because they only have 
They don't have front legs. Like, they're, they're, they have sh just wings and then legs. More like the anatomy of an eagle. And that is like kind of working. But here again, like he got actually a bit of a chest. Like he has a bit of a chest. Um, but how did he keep that up? What is keeping the butt up? So, you know, other animals that are four-legged animals that fly around are bumblebees. So you, if you have a that was that. So let's just say it. It's magic, okay? That's magic. As well. So this. Um, that's it, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's stay in touch. Let's uh, talk about animals, but I might not stop. <laughs> <laughs> also, do you have any questions? Da, 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 da. No questions? Haha. <laughs> then I, I wish you a great. Oh, there's one. So in, in, um, it depends a bit what your animator wants to do. Um, since I'm often also the animator, for me, I would, I would like fold the wings and then put an action constraint on it, like storing the animation in an action and then put another bone on it and like tut, open, close, open, close. Um, you can do a lot of different things. You can, it's an entirely different, like, huge, huge, huge topic, what you could do. Like the easiest would be you animate it once, put it in an action constraint, you're done. Um, that is like the easiest answer to that. It's a specific example. I'm actually not using it that much. Um, for, it sometimes can be used, no, I actually not use it that much. It would be a specific case. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah, one more. Then I wish you a great rest of the con. Come up to me, talk to me. I'm approachable. I would love to talk to you. And for every female or non-binary person in the room, we have a meet and get together at 16.30. I would love to see you there as well. Thanks so much.